Well, it's a beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, it's about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Um, I thought it was going to be really cold again this morning, but actually it's pretty nice. We're in the high 50s, low 60s. Um, figured I need to get out here and get to work instead of sitting around and not doing anything all day. Let me show you what we're going to do now. Um, we're going to go with the uh, woven roven on the light spot up in the front, up in the bow section. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get, what I measured is we're going to do one 9 inch by 24 inch strip and then one 12 inch by 24 inch strip. And, what the, and then we're going to also do with chop strand the same way. So you start with chop strand on the bottom, then you put roven on top of it, and then you do chop strand again and another layer of roven. You always want to do chop strand in between. That's the reason why the 1708 has the chop strand on the, on the back side of the woven. So therefore you get, you know, nice adhesion. So what I've done is I went ahead and sanded down that spot, even though I really didn't need to. This is unwaxed resin. It just looked really shiny to me. But after I did the front ski locker section, I decided to go ahead and sand it down. So I sanded it down really good, acetoned it's good and sticky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut um, basically my setup right here so that way I can have it all ready to go. We can mix up a lot of resin and go in there and just pop it all at once. A good pair of uh, shears makes this so easy to cut. Doesn't have to be exact, you just want good general direction or sizes. Let's see, what you get is overlap, is what you want, so that way it adheres good to the hull. So we got our two sections there, now I need to go get my two sections of uh, chop strand, which are over here. I hate this stuff. I told you that. I hate this. Chop strand just falls apart as you're using it. So does this rope woven, but it's not quite as bad. So I'm gonna lay it on the edge of my table here. We want a nine inch. I have I have sections. labeled as far as where I want to cut it, as far as every inch or so. stuff is nasty. Okay. So now we need our longer one. One side of this stuff seems to be really easily to work with, the other side is just, just gross. This one actually is going to work pretty good for us. works so what we've got is we've got the first layer of woven the big piece that have a layer of chop strand and then right below it we have a smaller woven and then right below that we have a another chop strand I think that'll be enough that's close to 50 almost 60 ounces of uh, chop strand in there or uh, fiberglass so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go wipe it down once again in the boat to make it sticky again and then uh, mix up a bunch of resin. I have a feeling that's going to take two full quarts because that chop strand soaks it up and so does that woven. So uh, I'll go set the camera up in there and you can watch what I do.
That's how you do a layup. Okay, no air bubbles. Turned out really nice. Now you can still see the light spot, but that's just because there's no gel coat under the bottom, and we'll actually do that when we gel coat the uh, deck also. We'll just go down there and put a couple of coats on it, and that'll seal it up real nice. All right, before we move on to the next part, I wanted to kind of go over uh, peanut butter. I see a lot of questions asked and a lot of questions sent to me of how do you make peanut butter? What's the exact consistency? What's the recipe? All that kind of good stuff. Well, the short answer is, is there really not an answer for that? Um, I can tell you how I make mine, but uh, I mean, honestly, there's a couple of different ways you can make it. Um, let me uh, tell you how I do mine, okay? What I do is I use this fume silica, which is basically cabosil, and it looks like... Uh, baking powder and uh, stuff gets everywhere. I also use quarter inch chop strand glass. And what I do is I take, um, like what I would, what I'm fixing to show you what I did, I took uh, a pint at a time in my little mixing jar, put a pint in there, uh, and then what I do is I mix in my chop strand, which is not a whole lot. Um, for a pint, um, maybe about half or that. You don't want it too too uh, too thick with this stuff. You don't want to thicken it with this chop strand. This adds your, your strength. If you put too much in there, it gets all stringy and nasty and it just is hard to work with. Um, and then you use this to thicken it. And I'm telling you, you need a lot of it. It takes about a quarter of a gallon for a pint to actually thicken it to consistency. Um, after I put this in, I, I add the hardener and then mix it in. You don't want to try to, to mix it uh, after you've put in the thickener, it doesn't the hardener just doesn't, does not distribute itself well. So you want to make sure you do it before you put the fume silica in or the cabosil, whatever you want to call it. You can also use bread flour. You can also use uh, wood flour. There's a lot of other stuff you can do it. But I get these gallons pretty cheap, so and it makes a really nice uh, uh, fillet or fillet. So that's how I do it. I mix it to just till you get it the right consistency. You got to mix fast. Uh, just get about 20-30 minutes working time with your stuff. So, just uh, that's that's basically it. As those two components and and uh, and uh, what do you call it? Uh, resin. Okay, so that brings me on to what I've got done here. Uh, I didn't set the camera up because honestly, all I was doing was experimenting. I didn't know what I wanted to do. So this is the little kickouts. They're going to go up on either side. Um, I finally got them cut to exactly what I wanted. Now underneath there is I took a two inch by two inch cleat, wrapped it in fiberglass, soaked the fab fiberglass, and then I used peanut butter and glued it to the stringer, which runs right here. Then I used stainless screws and screwed to it, so that way it's, it, it uh, gives it the clamping pressure. Probably going to take those screws out, but I'm not quite sure yet. We'll kind of see how things go. But uh, that really stiffened everything up. And then I took my piece on either side. You see the raw wood right there? Um, 
I basically put that on top with peanut butter and then screwed it down. Filleted the edges right up there and the other side and now they're drying. So now I need to come back with my other side and go up, but I'm gonna let this stuff dry and then I'll come in here and mess with it here in about 15, 20 minutes. I need a break and my allergies are killing me, so I need to go blow my nose, take some allergy medicine. But uh, that's where it is so far. Uh, we'll have this all done hopefully by this evening. And I need to get in there and test my, uh, my gas tank also. And at some point in time, we need to put the gas tank bottom and the ski locker bottom in there and glass those in too. I'll worry about those as soon as I get this engine bay built. But anyway, that's, that's kind of where I am at this point in time. And that's how I make my, uh, my peanut butter. All right, well, the end of another weekend. Sun is setting, it's about 8.30. 11 hours, gone again. I have everything built and glassed in. Um, I just finished glassing in these two sections right here on either side. And that's one continuous sheet of two actually that go from here all the way down to the hull. So it wraps down over. I'll tell you, getting around that right there is a pain in the butt. And I think there's some air bubbles in it, but I can't get rid of them. So I'm just gonna have to deal with it. Trust me, there's enough 1708 on there to make it plenty strong. So anyway, uh, it is done. I'm gonna let it cure up. Um, smashed the crap out of my finger earlier today um, with a screw, actually snapped back. It got tied into my rubber glove. And when I was yanking back, it uh, the screw came back and snapped me like a rubber band would. Boy, that hurt. I had to pop the blood blister a little while ago. Man, that's hurt like Dickens. But uh, anyway, so it's glassed in. Um, my next step is to cap off the stringers, which I know is just gonna be an absolute joy. Um, after what I went through getting around that little corner right there, you can imagine how hard it's gonna be to go up and over these stringers. So I'll probably round them off or something like that. I'm not quite sure yet. I haven't got that far. I'm tired, uh, got a headache. It's time for a shower, a beer, and some relaxation. Oh yeah, check out my little cut in right there. That's where my gas tank sits in there. I still haven't tested fit my gas tank. I'm sure it fits okay. I'll let this kick off a little bit, come out here in the night and try it. But uh, that's it for now.